Which player could be a surprise cut for the Dallas Cowboys at the end of training camp? All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Cowboys podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every day. Locked On. Locked On. Locked On. Locked On. Locked On. Locked On. Locked on, Cowboys. Locked on. Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. I am Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. He is Landon McCool. Check him out at McCoolBCB. Landon, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing very well. I am that much closer to heading down to Oxnard and starting Oxnard, the, Oxnard and starting the, the, the kind of real part of training camp we should be getting you know some sort of preliminary kind of reports today you know that this guy looked like this this guy lined up here uh but the 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 actual nitty-gritty of training camp starts next week when they t- put the pads on yes. and that's uh that's what i'm excited to be down there so i'm excited we're gonna get, get you guys yeah we're gonna get to you guys twitter questions today we will note that the cowboys do have a practice scheduled for wednesday Basically, if you're jogging around the house in your t-shirt and shorts, that's about the equivalent of what the Cowboys <laughs> are going to be doing today. Yeah. I've got a feeling, but I'm sure we'll get some news. But before yeah. we do that, let's uh, let's get to some of your questions. This first one comes from Thomas. He wants to know which player could be a surprise cut for the Dallas Cowboys this year. We're going to play a little game. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a, a list of players, and you tell me how surprised you would be if they're cut. One being. Not surprised at all. That guy has no chance of making the roster. Anyways, 10 being, I'm absolutely floored, absolutely shocked. So, are you ready? Let's do this. I like this. Yeah. Okay. First one, James Washington. Uh, I'll say uh, five. You know, I th- I think that they didn't necessarily – it feels like he's an insurance policy to be sure. And, and insurance policies can definitely, you know, be cut if, if they feel like – uh, let's say like uh, someone like Vasher really flashes and they yeah. really like him, uh, you know, and, and or somebody, you know, maybe a little bit further down that, that they feel like can provide them some offensive snaps and as well as some good special teams work. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Washington uh, was a cut and then they ended up still si- going to sign a different veteran. So I would just because he, uh, you know, I think they needed to get a body in here to uh, help facilitate OTA practice. I think they needed to have somebody as like the floor just in case. But mm-hmm. if uh, any of these guy- younger guys uh, take advantage of their opportunities, I wouldn't be s- at all s- uh, surprised if James Washington was cut. Yeah, I would mention that he was not placed on the PUP list today, which means which he's ready to go for practice. Yeah. So expect him to see him out there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday when the Cowboys are on the field. Uh, next one, Josh Ball. Oh, that's a good one. Um I think I would be a little bit surprised. Uh, you know, I think you would need to see a lot of improvement with some other people. I mean, someone's going to have to push him off the, off the field, right? Like, well, let's go. Well, I, I see. I just don't <laughs> see that. Do, do you think that they wouldn't keep both? Like, to me, it feels like they would keep both. <sighs> to me, it would have to be somebody like else like Avante Collins or yeah. Isaac Alicone, right? Like somebody like that taking his spot. Yeah, because I, 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 I imagine that the plan is to keep both, one and one for each side, yeah. right? Um, I would say – What if he I just doesn't actually, look good in camp? Like he's just – Yeah, I mean that's certainly good. possibility. I, I would say like – I think it's less than Washington. I, I would say it's like three or four just because he's cheap. They've, invest, they've invested in him. It's a little bit early to cut bait, I think. Connor McGovern. What if – what if Tyler Smith wins the left guard job – Tyler Biotish is your starting center and Matt Farniak just looks really good. And they're really excited about like Al Lindstrom and James MP on the practice squad. Then I would imagine that they would trade Connor McGovern. I, I, I don't imagine they would yeah. cut him. That, yeah. So I'm going to say that I don't think he would get cut just because I don't, I don't think they would give away a young player on a rookie contract like that necessarily. I don't disagree. Um, I actually think there's still an outside shot that he starts week one at left guard. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. Or, I, or center, frankly, or, you know, or fullback. <laughs> or definitely fullback. Definitely uh, fullback. Dante Fowler. Could he be the next Coney Ely, the guy that the Cowboys signed in the offseason, talk up a bunch and 
never makes the roster. Was it you that I, – I'm trying to give you credit here. Was it you that said that you thought that he had the widest range of outcomes for going into training camp? I think I, I saw yes. you say that. I, I mean, uh, I, I could easily see where he's like seven sacks this year or just not on the roster this season. I totally agree. Um, so I'm going to say five. I, 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 I tend to think that he makes the team and that he actually plays a decent role. Um, but I, I mean, maybe he doesn't have anything left or, you know, and, and, well, and they have so many bodies there that they may, you know, skew him for, you know, the younger guys that they think are growing. It, it, what it makes this thing a little bit hairy is you have Demarcus Lawrence who agreed to a three year, $30 million contract, all guaranteed. Dorrance Armstrong just got Armstrong. paid and you just drafted Sam Williams. Like those yeah. three guys are an absolute lock no matter what. Yeah. And then you have Michael Parsons is that kind of hybrid outside or you know pass rusher slash linebacker so we're talking about like dn5 right now this Nobody's role is definitely not five. guaranteed yeah absolutely no. not so uh but at the same time you keep a lot of these guys so uh, I, I i i'll say five i, I think okay. it, I, I wouldn't be shocked but i uh you know i i also wouldn't be shocked that, like you said if he had seven sacks this year two more um what about israel or sorry uh Nation Wright. I was going to say Israel Makamu, but he's a sixth round pick. He, his job is he very much has to have a good camp. Uh, but Nation Wright, third round pick who played a lot of special team snaps. They're pretty deep at corners. Is there any chance he doesn't make the roster? I guess there's a chance. Like if if the, the USC kid, uh, what's his name? Isaac, Isaac Taylor uh, Stewart. Yeah. Taylor Stewart has like a really good camp. If Bland really shows out. If Joseph is what uh, we to me, it's Joseph. Him to be. Right? If, yeah. if Joseph comes in and he's taking things seriously and he's playing really well, now your top four corners are set. A lot of your top five with CJ Goodwin. It's like, do we have to have another project corner on the roster, or do we cut him and see if we can grab him on the practice squad? I don't know. You know, and that's the interesting thing about Nation Wright specifically is that I would say of the cornerbacks that are available to be cut. I think Nation Wright would be the one that would might have the least interest from teams outside of this organization because not every team values no. the length and the height like the Cowboys do. So that's an interesting proposition. Um, I, you know, I still would be surprised. I think I, I would. So I, I, again, I'm terrible at this. The surprise is is closer to ten, right? Yes. Uh, I would be like six or seven. Yeah. Uh, last one. Any chance Donovan Wilson? Like this would to me, this would be like a nine or a ten. But he hasn't always been durable. And, you know, this wasn't the coaching staff that drafted him. Any chance? I, I don't. I. I mean, I don't think so. Just because they yeah. don't, unless you know, unless Mukamu really comes out and has a great camp. You know, they just like, don't really have depth there. Unless no. unless it's Marquise Bell or Wanye Thomas or Tyler Coyle. Like you'd almost need two of those guys just to completely outplay Donovan Wilson. And I think that they honestly, I mean, I think it's, it's more likely to be the opposite where they're trying to feature, not feature him, but they're trying to get Wilson on the field more. They're trying to I use agree. more three safeties because I think he's a guy who can, is a playmaker when he's on the field and uh, you know, they're, they're not going to remove that. So if anything, I think they'll have special packages to make sure that he gets on the field and he's your third safety. So he'll likely rotate in a lot anyways. Uh, and, and I can't imagine. I mean, I, like I said, it's possible if some of these younger guys play better, but I, I don't anticipate Wilson being cut, especially yeah. because he's on a cheap deal. It's not, it's not like he's, he's on the last year's rookie deal. Yeah. He can play special teams. He's not afraid to come and play in the box. And he's one of your better playmakers. Like he just I makes think so too. a bunch of plays. So I don't expect that. Uh, all right, we're going to get to some more of your guys' Twitter questions. But before we do that, I want to tell you guys about Dave. If you're living paycheck to paycheck or struggling to make ends meet, it can be really stressful when unexpected expenses come up, but Dave can help you get out of a pinch when you really, really need it. Dave is the banking app that can help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. That is more money to fill your tank, buy a wedding gift, or catch up on bills. You can finally tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out without any hangups. There is no interest and no credit check needed. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief that they need with extra cash. So if you're in a pinch and you need some extra help, download Dave and think of it as a helping hand from future you. Download the Dave app from the App Store right now. That is D-A-V-E. 
Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal instant transfer fee supply. Banking provided by Evolve, member FDIC. All right, Lane, let's get to the next couple questions. Um, who is this year's J Ron Curse? Uh, is there a player that could play at a near <laughs> Pro Bowl level that nobody is expecting? Dante Fowler. That's the name I was going to say. I mean, it's, it's, Look, I mean, he's a free agent guy you signed who has some pedigree at some point. Uh, kind of a rec- reclamation project, you know, with a with a with a coach that he formerly played with, uh, coming into a situation that is probably more conducive to what he does best. I, I think that fits the J. Ron Kirsch model very well. I imagine, you know, look for Fowler, and we've talked about this with him before. He's coming into a situation from from the Falcons where he was. The best pass. Well, I mean, he was the focus of the pass rush. I mean, mm-hmm. OCs were basically not challenged to have to block a bunch of other folks. You know, Grady Jarrett inside, obviously, when he was healthy, but outside, you know, uh, Fowler was the guy that they were focusing on. <clears throat> As you mentioned, coming to Dallas, he might be defensive in five. You know, he he may be. He's definitely going to be heavily part of a rotation. Mm-hmm. He certainly isn't going to be seeing double teams or anything like that while he's on the field with Demarcus Lawrence or Mike Never. Parsons or both. Um, and and so I, I think he's definitely going to get the most quality opportunities to rush the passer that he's had probably since he's been with the Rams, right? And had and had Aaron oh, Donald yeah. and Floyd yeah. kind of drawing attention away from him. So. Um, yeah, I think that that's to me seems like the simple answer there. Just because, again, as we've spoken, Fowler is the free agent that we that we feel like has by far the widest range of outcomes going into the season. We should also mention it's not like he's not a talented player. Like no, we've seen him not. play at a Pro Bowl level. We've seen him be a top ten pick before, and he's clearly got that ability. Now he's not always been in a great situation. He has been on a couple bad teams. We'll see. I, he's also what, two years removed from an injury now. Yeah, I wouldn't I, be surprised if he has a good year. I honestly, I honestly think that there's a better chance that he has a good year than he has a, a you know kind of a middling mediocre. I, I think that there's a much better chance he has a better season this year than he did last season. Let's put it that way. Just because his, his like we said, his opportunities are a lot better, and we've seen in the past that when he isn't the focus of the pass rush when he's not having to deal with double and triple teams, he, he produces. So sure. uh, yeah, I definitely think, you know, even though he was on that previous list of potential guys that might get, you know, surprise cut. I, I, I think there's a very good chance that he has a very good season. This and, and I'll actually mention another guy that we were talking about as a surprise cut. What about James Washington? Because I mean, that's, yeah, it's kind of the same thing, right? James Washington is somebody who was a second round pick had monster production out of Oklahoma state. And he's going from, one of the worst possible situations for a receiver to a very good one where there are targets open. And now you go from arguably one of the worst quarterback situations in the league to a top 10 quarterback situation. I I look at it like this. He is basically the same age as Cedric Wilson was last year going into training camp. And last year's when Cedric Wilson broke out, we've already seen James Washington have multiple seasons better than what we've seen Cedric Wilson have up until this point. In 2019, James Washington had a 700-yard season and three touchdowns, averaging about 9.2 yards per target with Duck Hodges and Mason Rudolph. Like, if he gets some opportunity, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if he's pretty decent for them. He, he, he had all that in 2019 with Duck Hodges and Mason Rudolph, and then his quarterback situation got worse. It did. I'm, like, I'm <laughs> not even exaggerating. Like, it literally did get worse. The, the average A dot of the entire team got worse. The yards per attempt, the adjusted yards per attempt, all went down from that 2019 season when Ben Roethlisberger returned. Yeah. So, like, I mean, there's a chance. There's this talk constantly um, that James Washington, he's like, they're like, he came from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh knows wide receivers. Why would they get rid of this guy? No, no, no. I mean, James Washington came in a very bad time for, for Pittsburgh wide receivers because the opportunities were just not the same. Uh, ben Roethlisberger is just not the same. No. Uh, and, and and I think he, you said it right. Like the fact that he had his best season there the year that Roethlisberger missed almost the entire season or did miss the, the mm-hmm. entire season. He got hurt in week three. Yep. Week three. Yeah. Uh, that I mean, that, that shows you something. So, uh, I, again, I think you're right. James Washington, Dante Fowler, kind of brothers in – 
wide outcomes of possibility for for what what could happen with the Dallas Cowboys. Well, it's just interesting about Washington is I feel like we're at the same spot now that we were with J. Ron Curse, where I don't think anybody's expecting no, anything from no. him at all. Like Absolutely I think not. we were a little bit excited about about him back in March, but because he missed some of the off you know off season workouts, we just haven't heard anything from him. So. I think there's a chance when the Cowboys start practice here in about 40 minutes, it's one of the starting outside receivers, right? Like he sure. could very easily be one of the starting outside receivers in practice. And all of a sudden, a week from now, we're saying, it's James Washington, guys. He's an actual NFL receiver, like not a bad player. Yeah. I mean, again, like I think he doesn't necessarily solve your kind of short term, who's my wide receiver to solution stuff. But that doesn't mean that he can't be a very valuable and and and, and worthwhile wide receiver. I think the Cedric Wilson comparison, uh, maybe not as players, but as, as far in terms of, of production and role, yeah, well, a- if absolutely. He's a, if he's your number four receiver and you feel like when he's on the field, you don't have a significant drop off at receiver, Cowboys would love that, right? Like that would yeah. be a huge win for them. Absolutely. And again, I want to keep pointing this: those two guys, Cedric Wilson and James Washington, entered the draft the same year. Washington was a second round pick and people said Pittsburgh got a great value drafting him in the second round. Cedric Wilson was a late day three pick. I'm not sure the talent level is all that different despite Wilson getting a significantly bigger deal this offseason. That's fair. So we'll see. Uh, all right. Next question. This one from Goran. Who is one player the Cowboys absolutely have to know about? either good or bad at the end of the season. So somebody that's a little bit of a question mark entering the year. Is there somebody that's kind of <laughs> key that way for the Cowboys? Um, I, I mean, I think it, it's easy. Just, it's easy to say something like, you know, uh, Dalton Schultz because he, he's playing on a franchise tag. There's talk about trying to, you know, re-sign him. So I think that's, literally who they are looking to try to kind of discover who what he is this year right i feel like that one though i feel like we know what dalton schultz is but i think the cowboys want one more produce redo it one more time yeah Yeah. another 800 yards seven touchdown season they're going to give him the bag at least that's what i think (laughs) i'm going to go with jalen tolbert because i think you know the the truth is is that if tolbert isn't going to work out or it doesn't work out uh, then they they really need to make some plans, right? Because they've invested a high uh, third round pick in, in him. Um, it, they will if Tolbert is not who they think it is, then they are probably going to limp through the back part of the season, especially if, if Gallup doesn't come back uh, in a uh, in a role that in, in a way that he that we were hoping he does from that injury. Um, so I, I think that you know that's going to have to be a pretty big. Uh, priority going into the, the next season mm. is trying to find a solution at wide receiver. I think you can still like, let's say let's play through the whole year. Tolbert isn't the way that you want him to be. I think you can still feel good about Gallup coming into the, the following season being an, another year off of the uh, ACL injury, but I still feel like you're going to need to go out and figure out the wide receiver position immediately. And it, it uh, once again becomes a very high priority for this team going into the next season. Yeah, so full disclosure, we actually kind of did this question yesterday and the podcast had deleted. So you know my answer here is, is CeeDee Lamb. I, I think yeah. the Cowboys, they need to figure out if he is a true number one receiver that you can give the ball to or give 150 targets to. We know the wide receiver market has absolutely exploded this offseason. Uh, the Cowboys will have to decide whether they want to give him the fifth-year option after this year. He's a really important one. But the more that I thought about this question, I wonder if it's Trevon Diggs. Because Diggs, same draft class, but the difference is the Cowboys don't have the fifth year that option, fifth year, right? Yeah. So he's right. eligible for a contract after this season. If Diggs has another all pro year, they're going to make him the highest paid corner in football. Like I have no doubt. But if he struggles and the turnovers just don't come and he's giving up a bunch of yards, then what do you do? That's when things are going to get really tricky for them. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, you know, they're going to need to figure out if they believe in Diggs the way, you know, if Diggs is able, look, the expectations for Diggs are all over the place this year. (coughs) Excuse me. Um, And in, you know, I think expecting 10, I saw a comment on one of our YouTube videos yesterday uh, that uh, was suggesting that, that 
I was I was being unfair to Diggs because I didn't think he was going to get 11 interceptions again. I I think I'm being high on Diggs by suggesting that him not getting 11 interceptions but still, you know, getting 15 to 20 pass deflections and maybe six or seven interceptions like that that that's still an incredible year. I I think people need to like reset what expectations should be for a cornerback, right? Um, I mean, if if he gets double digit interceptions again, he'll only be like the first player in NFL history to ever do that, dating back to the 1930s. So, I mean, it would be it would be a little bit of a surprise. I think, it, if he could do I think that. it's okay if he doesn't do that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, um, I think you know the thing is is that he he, he has got skill set. I, mean, I think we mentioned this the other day. He has a skill set that I, I I don't think that he's ever going to not be around the football. I agree. I don't think there's going to be a season where, you know, he's still within his capabilities that he isn't going to be knocking passes down and intercepting football a lot because he, he's just his skill is the ability to track the football and the ability to catch the football like a wide receiver. Yes. So he, he'll be able to make plays regardless. Just just how many of them and how how much is he risking to get those five? Exactly. And so I think that's that's what's going to make the evaluation this season difficult because there is going to be a segment of Cowboys population that is going to view it like that, that commenter, right? Like, well, why isn't, why isn't Diggs getting almost se- uh, three quarters of an interception a game or whatever, whatever the crazy rate of interceptions sure. he was getting uh, this season. And, and, Oh, Diggs is no good. Diggs is washed. You know, it's like, I think we have to reset our expectations for what is a good year for Diggs. Uh, because obviously that was a good year, but that's, that, that shouldn't be the expectation. I anticipate that he's still going to get his hands on a lot of footballs, whether that's interceptions, pass deflections, or both. And I, I anticipate that he will be better and more efficient in, in coverage, You know, kind of giving up less yards yes. uh, while still managing to get his hands on, on the occasional football. Yeah, and I think that's the trade-off the Cowboys are hoping for. Hey, we, we'll, we'll live with a couple fewer interceptions if you can be a little <laughs> bit stickier in coverage. We'll see if that happens. I actually expect him to do that. Uh, got one more question I want to get to, Landon. It's a really good one. But before we do that, I want to tell you guys about Bet Online. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all of your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news for every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet online continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports wagering information from live in game betting scores, podcasts, and more. They have you covered head to bet online today, or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening bet online where the game starts. All right. So we are just over a week away from the first preseason game of the year. Had to be the Raiders. Wow. Yeah. Why are the hall of fame game? Yeah. Next week. Crazy. That's it happens crazy. fast. Crazy. It's just nuts. I know. Anyways. Football's officially back. Uh, the That's question it. from Goran. He wants to know, what is your favorite random preseason performance for the Cowboys? Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, again, just to draw back the curtain, uh, we did we did this question <laughs> <laughs> in a uh, delete, now deleted uh, lost episode of, of Locked yeah. On Cowboys podcast. Um, my favorite random preseason. I, I, I'm going to go with the one I, I came, went with yesterday. Uh, Raymond Radaway is just a name that again, like it's uh, just kind of came out of nowhere. I mean, let me be clear like uh, the phenomenon of the out of nowhere undrafted free agent wide receiver existed before Raymond Radaway and it has existed since Raymond Radaway. Yes, but to me, he was the guy who uh, I mean, maybe since Sam Hurd and Miles Austin that felt like he, he this is gonna make it like he's gonna yeah. like it because all yeah. of these guys i mean again <laughs> to peel back the curtain of having been to too many of these training camps at this point all every year <clears throat> there's a wide receiver who is incredible an undrafted free agent where did this guy come from why did he not get drafted he's just eating up targets he's catching p- passes he's sc- scoring touchdowns we get two weeks into training camp never hear from that guy again. yep or we get into the first preseason game, one catch on six targets and never never does anything. Raymond Radaway was that guy who was able to take the training camp practices into the preseason, dominated the preseason, 
And everyone was just like, this dude's going to make it. He's incredible. He's going to make the team. He's going to be part of the offense next year. And um, and then un- had suffered an incredibly unfortunate timed injury on the last snap of the – was it the last preseason game? I think so, yeah. Um, I mean, it's just like you couldn't write it more depressing as far as an ending goes. And, and he kind of never <clears throat> was able to catch on after that. I think he actually bounced around a little bit and tried to come back with somebody else like a year or two later. Uh, but it just never, it just never panned out. So uh, there's tons of those guys out there, but to me, I don't know if it's the alliteration in the name and I'm a comic book fan. So I, I I'm used to those guys uh, having alliteration in their name, but Raymond Radaway was a guy that uh, I definitely have strong memories of. I, I, I was just thinking him. of the receiver. I, I could not remember the name of the guy that we were so excited about after two weeks of training camp. And then he got to uh preseason, just dropped everything. John Bea Johnson, remember John Bea like, Johnson, JBJ, baby, <laughs> like yeah, two, two years ago. Uh, <laughs> remember right. he just dropped everything. Um, you were on John Bea Johnson well, early, I think. That's if a, I remember uh, correctly. Didn't, didn't end up being anything. A uh, c- couple guys, really quickly. The, the, yeah. the, the goat here is Jamaica Rector, led the of NFL course. in receiving yeah. yards in preseason back in 2003. Terrence Copper had a big game one oh, time yeah. against the Saints in preseason when the Cowboys were wearing their awesome blue uniforms with white shoulder pads uh oh. there's been some good quarterback performances including tony romo i guess i believe that was against the texans i uh, had a late fourth quarter come from behind win on a quarterback sneak that almost got him cut uh that was a good one uh the, can i throw one in can i throw ahead. one in do you remember i mean uh, this guy i never understood why he didn't make it Jameel showers you remember how of good course. Jameel showers I mean, was at different points playing quarterback and then they moved him to safety I was like, uh, they I, ruined I, his I, career. I'll, they should have let him to the Listen, which that leads me to the number one, right? I guess it's not really random, but Dak's performance against the Rams yeah. at the Coliseum yeah. when he just absolutely lit them up is the, the most shocking one to me. Because as you mentioned, like he was behind Jameel Showers That's right. throughout training camp. And I actually remember like there was a debate who was going to start against the Rams because Romo was out. Kellen Moore got hurt. Was it going to be Showers or Dak? It was Dak and. Started every game forward. As I as I mentioned, and again, the now famous deleted blocked on episode, uh, that is still one going to that Rams preseason game is still maybe one of my favorite football moments ever. I could do a whole podcast on just that whole experience of because it was the Rams' first game back in Los Angeles. It was Dak's first game starting as a preseason. Like it was just an incredible moment. But but if you remember, like previous to that day. Like I think literally the day before was the first day that Dak had had an eye-opening practice, mm-hmm. right? Where where he actually where you're just like, oh, what what happened in the last three days with this kid? Like he suddenly did he read a quarterback for dummies book or something? Like he it was unbelievable the amounts of uh, improvement that he had had experienced in kind of just that week, uh, and I'll never forget. I was walking along the sideline. And uh, I, you know, was there was the tower in the middle of the field, and I just kind of peered back on the other side because there was a group of people, and they were all circled around Kellen Moore on the ground with his ankle broken, uh, and sitting there going, "I guess we're going to see Dak Prescott at this game tomorrow." So, yep. uh, and I mean, could not have been obviously more delighted and surprised to, to watch him uh, the following day in Los Angeles. So, yeah, uh, what a game! Yeah, uh, we have so many. We've got Rico Gathers at the Hall of Fame game. There was a, if you remember, some Dustin Vaughn buzz for like oh, one yeah. single game That's for right. a while, like back in was that 2015 or something like that. Uh, we've been very spoiled with just great uh, preseason performances. <laughs> <laughs> if that's what you want to call be, being spoiled, having great preseason performances. There was yeah, a whole, there's so. one more that I, I can't remember yeah. the name. Was it Bass or something? There was a defensive tackle. A huge Ken Bishop. Team. No, well, Ken, that was, was a different Ken? one. There was, oh, there okay. was Ken Bishop and Devon Coleman back in like 2014, yeah. 2015. Yeah. But they had this, I think it was like number 79. I had somebody could remember, but he had like two sacks in the final preseason game. And I thought the yep. Cowboys were going to keep him. That wasn't Justin Hamilton, was it? Because wasn't Hamilton seventy nine at one point? Yeah, it wasn't Hamilton. This is this is a ways. This is I, okay. I, 
This is probably 2015, 2016. The guy oh, ended up okay, making okay. the roster, and I think the Broncos claimed him, and he never did it. But somebody remember. help us out. Who is this yeah. random defensive tackle? Number just, 79 for the 2015 undrafted free agent yes, class. It did absolutely you guys, nothing. You guys look that up for us. Yeah, yeah. Please, somebody help us out. Uh, all <laughs> right, that is it for today's show. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen today. Now make your second listen to Locked On NFL Podcast. Our national NFL experts and insiders keep fans dialed in with the biggest stories and the latest news from around the league because an offseason doesn't equal a break in the action. You can follow the show wherever you get your podcast: Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Google Podcasts. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Locked On Cowboys. You can follow Landon at McCoolBCB, and I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier. I'll see you guys next time.